Hello and welcome to the New Testament Journey. This week... I'm back. Indeed. I'm Leslie. Wonderful. And I'm Tom. <laughs> and we're going to look at the book of Hebrews, the second half of this amazing book. And uh, Hebrews feels a little bit like sort of a big uh, ocean liner, where it yeah. starts and you're like, oh my word, this is like a bit slow. And then it, as it gets going, you're like, God, really it meaty, finishes. Really, really Amazing. So, uh, so I'm actually going to read um, from chapter 8, verses 8 to 12. It says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I'll make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with your ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they did not remain faithful to my covenant, and I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel. After that time, declares the Lord, I'll put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbours or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. So this is what we have to get straight in our heads. Uh, God, in his kindness, calls Israel. And he promises, I'm going to be your God. I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to you, you know, be with you. And I'm going to enable you to prosper and be the people who bring blessing to all over the world. And Israel fail. Mm. And they fail. And then God re responds to that failure by saying, OK, I'm going to promise you again. I promise you again. And they fail. And what does he do? He responds by promising again. Mm. And they fail again and they fail again. And the Old Testament is just story after story of God promising and saying, I'm going to be with you and for you and use you and people failing. I get a bit depressed when I read. <laughs> and, you, and you get to the end of the Old Testament and you're like, they failed so many times and yeah. so catastrophically. God's like, OK, this isn't working. Mm. I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something which is not just me promising something to you, but I'm going to be in you. Mm -hmm. and, and so what he basically does, he says, you failed. You failed over and over again. I'm now going to not only make my promise again, I'm going to increase what I promise. I'm going to give you even more. Mm -hmm. It's just craziness. And so he says, I'm, I'm going to become right, like do even more of you. It's even more generous. It's even more giving of himself to his people. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's amazing. It's ridiculously generous of our God. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. If, I feel like I haven't quite communicated that enough. But, you know, imagine if you had somebody who worked for you. Yeah. And you, you kind of like, here, can you do this basic job? Just go and take the bins out at the end of every day. And you get there the next morning. It's like the bins aren't out. Failed. And you'd be like, what are you doing? Just take the bins out every day. That's what I want you to do. Just just do this thing. And they don't do it. And they don't do it. And you keep saying, OK, I'm going to keep paying you. I'm going to keep employing you. And it gets to the point where like, not only do they not take the bins out, they tip the bin stuff all over the floor. And they're like, kind of like, I don't care what you say. And if you say, OK, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay every night. And I'm going to now help yeah. you take the bins out. I'm going to walk yeah. with you and do it with you. And I'll do the bits you don't know how to do. That is how generous he is. Mm. And it can only be love, can't it? Shows us the character of God. It does. Shows us the character of God. And we are, we could ask, like, why would God make a new and better covenant with Israel? Why would God do that? Someone doing the bins. Why would he do that? And it can only be love. Yeah. It's not a transaction that he gets a no. lot from. <laughs> <laughs> but it's love. Uh, and and uh, we should know that God has a relentless determination to do good on the earth. That's that's what the the yeah. book of the writer of the Hebrews is saying. Like God is so abounding in love, He's so deliberately and intentionally wanting to do good to you, to me, to this earth. That's His desire. It's because um, it's relentless, isn't it? And uh, so <laughs> when we feel low, this affects us because His love is relentless. He's not going to give up on us. Yeah, He keeps going. So you can do things, can't you? And you think, I've failed again, I've failed again. Mm. You could never fail as badly as Israel. And yet God never gave up. And I just, to remember the character of God is so helpful. Yeah. Um, it also is worth doing when we, uh, as maybe the Hebrews are, who's writing to are doing in this thing, we're tempted to go somewhere else for our answers. Mm. We, we maybe begin to think, hey, I, I just, you know, there must be a better deal out there than God. And it's like, but you'll never find you'll never find anybody who will be so relentlessly committed to your to your well being as God. Mm. There's, there's, they don't exist. Mm. Like everywhere you go, pretty much, it's a transaction. You give and you get. 
you know, you give and you get, and people treat you like that all over the place. But with God, it's just, it's all his relentless determination to do you good. So why would you ever look elsewhere for your, for your hope and your well-being and your way of doing things? Um, why would you ever turn to anything else for protection? It makes no sense. No, it makes no sense. So also, reading about this in Hebrews also shows us about the predicament of humanity. Shows us that we respond to to God with like weak efforts, and shows that we're uh, fickle and easily changeable. And then sometimes we forget God and pursue, like you just said, forget God and pursue our own agenda. So it makes no sense whatsoever when you've got this astonishingly generous, committed God who just wants to do good to it. It makes no sense not to do what he wants. And yet, over and over again, mm. the story is that we don't do what is just a sensible thing. Mm. And I, we, you know, we've been talking a lot and thinking a lot about wisdom lately, haven't we? And actually, um, you realise that sin is a big problem. And uh, traditionally, I've always kind of considered sin, the deliberate decision to not do what God wants, to be a big problem in my life. I know there's times I've done that, and it's got me in all kinds of trouble. But another thing that I've really think about is sometimes it's not that we deliberately don't do what God wants. We just we're just in our foolishness. We don't know. We 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 haven't taken the effort to look at what God wants. So we just make a decision quickly or foolishly. Mm. And that equally is just oh, it's just such a massive issue. You end up getting yourself in all kinds of trouble. Um, you you build you know relationship with the wrong person or you spend your money in the wrong way or you say the wrong words at the wrong time and um, Israel over and over again did this they not only deliberately rejected God but just in their foolishness they just forgot him they just made alliances that weren't helpful they 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 looked in other directions when they were fearful they when they wanted things they pursued pursued that stuff in ways that God hadn't said was they just didn't ask God what's the way to do this. It's just the foolishness. Um, and I think, um, you know, for us, it's just wor- really worth recognising uh, that if we want to do well in life, and this is what the writer of the Hebrews is saying, if you want to do well in life, like God, the God who shows us Jesus is the way you look. Mm. You, you can't, it's not like, 8,000 years of human history, so sort of from 6,000 BC through to now, humans have not got the job done by looking in our own ways yeah. for how to f- find a life that's really meaningful, full of goodness and life. And, and so, like, let's just acknowledge that. Yeah. Let's look to the one who is there, wanting to do good. And acknowledging that is humility, Yeah. isn't it? So humility and wisdom often go hand in hand. And humility is knowing that we're prone to make foolish mistakes and that haven't got all the answers. It's wisdom is looking outside of ourselves to the one who does. Mm. So I used to teach, uh, coach little kids sport. Uh, when yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> you know these stories. Yes. And, and a lot of parents or aunts and uncles or if you've taught, you know what it's like, you have a kid and you're trying to teach them how to play tennis and we'd be, you know, here's the tennis shot and you taught them how to do it and the big kid goes, I know, I know, I know. And every time you're just trying to show them how to do it, they're like, I know. And they grab the thing and pull it towards them. And you're like, all right then, show us. And you throw the ball and, and they miss it. And you, and, you throw, and you throw the ball <laughs> to the next person and they've listened and they hit it and the next person and they hit it and the one who's like I know gets more and more angry because they can't do it because they don't know and then they run off in a strop and um, the question is for us as we read this stuff are we that stroppy kid are we saying to God I know I know like it, foolishness and then things go wrong and we throw a strop at God like oh yeah I understand that. You, you I've done should. That many times. Oh, I'm so angry. Why, why is this happening in my life? Yeah. What are you trying to teach me? It's like, I've been trying to teach you how to hit the ball. You wouldn't listen. You said you knew. All I want you to do is just come to me, trust Jesus, fix your thoughts, eyes, thoughts on him, the author and perfecter of your faith. That's what it says. <laughs> so just listen to Jesus and do what he says. And that's what, that's what he's sort of trying to say to the guys who are considering not looking at Jesus, but instead just doing this sort of kind of religious stuff, but without a real attentiveness to following Jesus. And what you're describing is wisdom, isn't it? Mm. It's wisdom. 
So let's talk a bit more about wisdom. So if we look at chapter 10 and chapter 11, that tells us how to cultivate humility and wisdom. And in chapter 10, verse 22, it says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So um, this is the lead up then to the big chapter 11, which if you know the book of Hebrews, you'll know like that's that's the chapter which we love. It's the heroes of the faith. It's people who by faith, mm. you know, they they trusted in God and the world was not worthy of them. Uh, and it's an amazing chapter. It's a really good summary of their lives and and faith. And what it shows us, that. what it sets us up here, we don't want to just do chapter 11 on its own, but the reason we chose this passage, because it sets up what then lay behind these guys in chapter 11, which was they they just kept on walking towards Jesus and doing what he said. Mm. And, um, and, and that's just the same as wisdom, isn't it? Mm. You just kind of acknowledge in every moment, okay, in this situation today, in this business decision, in this parenting decision, in this question about what, how do I spend my money, in should I make this investment, should I change this, should I change that, Where, in all these decisions, like, I'll just look at Jesus, and all faith is, is simply acknowledging that I probably don't know, but you do know, mm. and you just submit it to him, mm. and that's what they did, these people did, um, and which is just the simplest thing. So it, we're thinking about this to be a hero today in our modern world you have to be quite exceptional at things mm. it'd be like exceptionally beautiful exceptionally clever um you have to like really be very well known and almost to be like mediocre is a bit like a crime yeah <laughs> like, how dare you just be mediocre but um yeah he, you kind of get this end of terms like, you get the uh you're kind like, of the, uh, acceptable you, your um there was a joke when I was uh, working in the civil service and you got your assessment at the end of the year, how you'd done. <laughs> and nobody was ever allowed to be average. Like, right. you, if you got, like, they were an average employee this year, yeah. you'd be absolutely crushed. Be crushed. <laughs> Whereas the thing is, like, of course, most people would be average because yeah. that's what average means. But you can't be average now. Yeah. So we'd have these ridiculous titles like high achiever, top achiever, uh, super top achiever. You know, just most of us are average. <laughs> <laughs> in the modern world but Hebrews is talking about the heroes of the kingdom just do what Jesus is asking them to do and keep doing it that's right so it's so liberating because in our culture if you think you want to be great you think well I'm not super beautiful so I can't do that maybe I'll get a bit extra makeup and that might be all right I'm not super talented so how do I do it and you kind mm. of feel crushed by that mm. I have to it's achieve crushing. it's crushing like how can I be great but in the kingdom the invitation to greatness is simply mm. just just do what Jesus asks you to do and if you fail he'll still be utterly committed to you mm. just get, your, get yourself going and try again mm. that's that's you know, so it says the full assurance that faith brings we, we draw near to God with full assurance that he's so for us so just all we need to do is come to him and try and do what he says. Mm. And it's so amazingly exciting. Yeah, so um, that's what it says. It says uh, just a little bit more of the chapters to get a bit more of the flavour of this. Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, let us run with perseverance. With perseverance. Mm. That means just keeping on doing it. Mm. Uh, the race that's marked out for us. It's already been marked out for us. Mm. We don't have to be hugely creative or inventive. Yeah. Like, it's just there. Yeah. That's all we have to do. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter, or author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so you won't grow weary and lose heart. Do you get the idea? The thing about faith, if you want to be a person of great faith... What you do is keep on keeping on. Mm. Old orders are good orders. You just, as a missionary who I heard from China once said, you just plod. Yeah. 
No, it doesn't sound exciting, doesn't but sound but exciting. actually, just each day do it, yeah. and it's astonishing. It takes you to a place of the cross, but the cross takes you to the place of resurrection. So, yeah. as we've said, I think quite a few times in this New Testament journey, the the kingdom is this bizarre connection of it feels like I'm doing nothing significant. Mm. It feels like all I'm doing is walking towards the cross. Like this feels like I'm being bang average, mediocre. Nothing significant. Like, from the world's terms, this isn't in any way impressive. But as you do that in faithfulness, the kingdom, the resurrection power of the kingdom rushes in and turns these mediocre, bang average things into incredibly wonderful, effective, beautiful, powerful things. Now, don't by that think it means that you suddenly become the Instagram influencer or you suddenly become beautiful. It's... it. it you shouldn't think that in the worldly vision of hero is what that takes you into. It's a totally different understanding of what's heroic and great. Um, so that's that's really it, isn't it? It is. And then in these last few chapters in Hebrews, there's a real push into connective, connectedness with Jesus. Yeah. Um, and it talks about we're not approaching God like a mountain now that cannot be approached but we're approaching a person Jesus and a people the church yeah so I mean it, it it kind of feels like we're repeating the same thing but how do you have faith how do you persevere you just stay connected to Jesus mm. it's just that that is the heroic act mm. in this age just be connected to Jesus now don't be connected to ideas of what Jesus is like. Don't be just connected to a concept, but actually be connected to him, the person. And that's what is so important. The, 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 this letter, we think, is probably written to a church who were like, we're still going to kind of stay around the idea of religion. Yeah. We're still going to kind of stay around the idea of Yahweh, the God, who we're going to kind of still follow that stuff. And he's like, no, it don't just... Yeah. Kind of go through the motions. Actually, actually connect to Jesus, the real and living God who is available to you right now. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. They've gone off the main and the plane. They've kind of followed a few strange new ideas and talks about they've gone a bit cold in their faith. Yeah. So uh, the question is, are you really connected to Jesus? Mm. So many people we meet and they kind of hang around christianity and church and have moments of goodness but yeah somehow don't feel seem like they really have that real connection with jesus mm. it's life-giving that that they are actually fixed on him they love him and they're with him and they experience him um i don't know if you used to use uh you know powerpoint one of your favorite things yeah <laughs> and you try and create a presentation uh, for something and you put a shape like a square here and then you'd have a circle here. And you wanted to draw a line to connect those two things. And what I used to do for ages and ages, I did, what I didn't realise, I'd just get a line and I'd sort of put it. And when you're looking at it on the small screen, you'd go, oh, that's great, they're connected. And then if I'm like preparing a preach or something. And then when it was projected onto the big screen in front of everybody, you'd suddenly realise, oh my goodness, that line that I thought was connected to that square, actually there's, it's, it's wonky, it's a gap. <laughs> it's not connected. Yeah. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. So you in the small, it feels like I'm connected, but when it actually gets blown yeah. up into big, you realise it's actually it might look like, but it's actually not connected. Yeah, and that's what happens with suffering yeah. in our lives. In the small, when there's no suffering, we kind of think, yeah, I'm connected to, I'm connected to Jesus. Mm. Like there's a line between me and Jesus, and we're connected, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And suffering hits or challenge hits, and it's like it's blown up as a projector, and suddenly you realise I'm actually not connected to Jesus. Yeah. There's actually a gap there. I couldn't see that in this moment, but now I see there's the gap. That's a really and, good image. Oh, good. Well, I, don't, you know. I really relate to that. Yeah, yeah cool. So, um, so what <laughs> we're trying to get in this section is, in these times that are easier, like there's this thing called a connector, which mm. PowerPoint pr provides you with. It's not just you draw is a line, there? but there's a connector, and you click on this shape, connect, and you click on that shape, <laughs> connect, connect. And, and it automatically... So you could then move the shapes and it still stay connected. That is amazing, Tom. So, so then when it's projected up, there's no chance. It is connected. Now, this is the work of the Spirit. Yeah. And it's the work of faith. Uh, and something that seems to be happening is the connector is there. When he says, don't give up meeting together. Yeah. 
So I, I guess it's just the question is, will you ultimately l- really push into that connection with Jesus? Mm. That's, the, that's the thing. It's, it's to Jesus that you connect. Mm. And you do, that, you do that in the smaller by speaking to him, mm. listening to him, mm. uh, putting into actions the things that he's told us to do, the basics. Yeah. That's the left foot, the right foot. Yeah. By the fact that you're uh, listening to this and reading Hebrews, and connecting to him through the word. And it's not just yeah. going to church and being there. Totally. And I'm here. It's, it's that it becomes a lifestyle and it comes every day. Not glamorous. Not every day is like a mountain top up into the seventh heaven experience. But just that connection is that day to day relationship like you would have with a person. You just do the that's what you, when you're talking about doing the basics. Yeah. That's what it is, isn't it? So you connect to Jesus kind of in a relational way in moments, but then you build and strengthen that connection through walking like Jesus mm. walked. As you begin to walk mm. in his footsteps, you get to know him more and more. The connection grows. Mm. And chapter 13, you've just been saying this. So yeah. chapter 13 gives some just a few very practical things that you do to be connected to Jesus in terms of living out. So, so he talks about really loving people, genuinely loving. Which, do you know what, is one of the hardest things, isn't it? And rarest mm. things. Mm. I mean, so many people... Like, well, hey, the word lo- you know, love can be, oh, yeah, I love them. I love chocolate. Yeah. but we meet <laughs> so many coffee. people who are really like oh I love church I really want to come to church you know I've really been looking for a church for a long time and then they come to church and you're like well I don't think you were really looking for a church because mm. you're not talking to people you're not loving people mm. you're not when people want to are there you are not engaging with the people so mm. I don't know what it was you thought you were looking for but it wasn't church it wasn't mm. people to love you probably were looking for a spiritual experience that made you feel good mm. is that too harsh it's harsh, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Harsh, but true. Are you looking to actually love people? Yeah, people. real love. People. People who are not perfect. People who are not perfect. People who will annoy, annoy you. you. People who won't understand you at times. But people who will enrich you yeah. and show you Jesus when you push through to actually know them. Mm. So love people. So loving people. Hospitality to strangers. Amazing, isn't it? You may even entertain angels without knowing it if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's really quite interesting. Cool. <laughs> yeah. um, sexual purity. I don't think there's a single letter in the New Testament when it talks about following Jesus that doesn't say sexual purity is essential to it. Yeah. Well, all other sins are done outside the body, where sexual purity is done to your own body. Cool. Essential impurity is done yeah. to your own body. Um, when your body contains the Holy Spirit. That's one so Corinthians. That's quite serious. Corinthians, very good. I know, wrong book, but... No, 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 but it's, it's, it's there. Not being greedy... I don't know what to say about Considering, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it says it's saying it all itself. <laughs> uh, remembering your leaders. Yeah. And sticking to the main and the plane. What does that mean, Tom? Because yeah. I said that earlier. So um, don't sort of... There's always a new book or a new idea, especially on YouTube. I mean, my goodness, you get all kinds of weird and wacky things. Like you know, people are obsessed with the Nephilim or people yeah. like this verse is... The you know special revelation about this or the rapture, you know, just stick with the stuff like just Jesus. Like there's just mm. there's enough that's amazing enough about there. Jesus. It's enough in this book to keep you going for a thousand lifetimes. Yeah. We don't need to do all the weird stuff. Yeah. Just Jesus. Yeah. And if you do those things, you'll actually become like Jesus. You'll feel connected to Jesus. You'll persevere. You'll abound in faith, and the word will not be worthy of you. Wow, wow, that is incredible. Yeah. So we've broken that down in smaller bits, and that's amazing. So I'm going to finish by praying something from chapter 13. Amazing. There's an amazing blessing in it, and I thought that would be a great way to finish. So this is what the writer of Hebrews, it's actually benediction, prays for the recipients of the letter, and now we're going to pray it for you. So in the name of Jesus, now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. And may that be in your lives. Amen. To the one who sits upon the throne 
The greatest king that the world has ever known Be power and praise The one who was and is and is to come Forever faithful, the everlasting son We lift up your name You are the hope of heaven Our great reward Jesus, the only one worth living for The King of glory upon the throne We choose to bow to you You bore our guilt and shame You conquered sin to the battle to the grave Salvation is yours O oh, Lamb of God, you crushed the enemy We'll turn to life, now you stand in victory Then worship the right Join with heaven shouting out your praise. 